this year's Sipaman Lakoke had the opportunity to go inside to tell us more. He joins us now from our Durban studios. And so you were in prison, Sipaman Lakoke, but uh, thankfully uh, this time around, uh, you, in fact, you were not in as an inmate. You were a visitor. But that prison is, is really the home of some of the most hardcore criminals, the likes of Radovan Krecher, the, the, uh, the likes of Toza Miletaki. Uh, what was it like to be there? It was really depressing. I wouldn't want to go back there either to work or to be kept there. It's one of the most depressing environments that you can ever find yourself in. But I would hasten to say that Rodovan Krecher was kept there. He had a short stint, but he was taken out because he's still undergoing some legal and justice routes. So he was not there when we went there, but he was there before. We were able, though, to see some of the hardened criminals. I'm talking about the Western Cape uh, 28th gang leader, that is uh, George Thomas, whose nickname Hevelt, which means violence. He was sentenced to seven prison terms, so you would know what kind of people are kept there. We were also able to see the convicted, that's Nigerian uh, uh, Henry Oka is one of the people who's kept there. We saw and we spoke to Toza Militaki, who's described as one of the country's worst serial rapists and killers. However, he was unable to grant us an interview on record because he said he's not ready to talk yet, but he asked us to come back later. I said to him, we will try by all means to come back, but that environment, you get a sense, no wonder it's called the worst of the worst to us. The worst of the worst, um um, in as far as the, uh, I suppose, putting people away for life is concerned, uh, Sipamandla, but the, the, the immediate question that comes up is that we are a society based on the rule of law and the rights even of people who have been convicted of crimes. Uh, w w what is the department saying about whether this facility lives up to those expectations? How do they achieve maximum security without compromising human rights on the other end? That's a very tricky balance because they argue that they need to ensure that they practice and they protect human rights and inmates. At the same time, they need to make sure that they look after them so that they do not escape. So they say they play by the book. They've got well-trained prison officials because the ratio there is that one inmate, one warder. So they are saying whatever they do, their officials are well-trained on human rights, on high security. And I must tell you that everything there is not manually operated everything is high tech even to open the cell you do not have the keys someone is sitting somewhere you cannot see he or she opens that cell or that gate even the head of the prison does not have the keys there. Everyone who goes in there is thoroughly searched. I must tell you that it took months to prepare for this trip to go inside South Africa's highest, highest secured prison. So everything there is highly secured. But unfortunately, we were unable to see the security system because we were told that's off limits. But I can tell you that I've been to many prisons around the country to do stories. I've never seen such a thing to us. And the cells are below ground, are they? Well, they're underground. What I can tell you is that everything there, you've got these buildings which are, you know, overground, and then everything is underground. The cells are underground, and they are very small, by the way. Let me tell you something which will surprise you. Inmates there are kept 23 hours in solitary confinement, only one hour of sunshine. Even that, you do not leave the passage. You don't see the outside. You are only able to see whatever comes in. There is some sort of a courtyard. It's very small. They are given one hour to exercise. There is no hard labor. They just sit around for 23 hours. You are only allowed to have your Bible there and to read something. But you've got all the time in the world because you do not leave your cell. You just leave to go out to exercise for an hour. You come back and you loiter around for 23 hours. You do not even work so you've got all the time in the world and we were also able to see one of the cells which is not occupied at the moment that's where the late Mozambican national Ananias Mate tried to escape from he's the only one who has ever tried but he was unsuccessful as people will see in the package that we will show them shortly
All right, so um, you, of course you, you then compiled a comprehensive report for us, which we will bring to our viewers a bit later on. But just, you know, just to sort of get a, a feel of what it was like being there, uh, let me take a, a slight detour, Sipamandla, instead of focusing on the facility itself, let's talk about your experience with Toza Miletaki. I mean, this is someone who murdered nine women, uh, if I'm not mistaken, plus two more uh, who were not in, in Guazulu Natal. What was that like? It was very fascinating to us. You know, ironically, he was able to recognize me because before joining this media house, I covered his court case, by the way, in Umzinto. I was there. I interviewed him before, before being sentenced. So when we walked in, I asked him, do you still remember me? He said, yes, I do recognize you, Mr. Koke. And I said to him, okay, let's talk. And then he said, nah, not now. I'm not ready. But if you give me time, come back in two weeks' time. We will talk. I think I'll be ready to go on camera on record but for now I'm not ready he was in very high spirits except to say he has lost a lot of weight you can see that he's tamed because when he was sentenced he was someone who was fit but there he has lost a lot of weight you can see that that place has taken its toll on him but you know he was in very high spirits very jovial and he even cracked Jeez. some jokes saying why do when I interview him why do I want to speak to him He's not the only one here. There are other criminals. But nonetheless, he was very cooperative, except to say he will not be able to grant us an interview on camera. But we did have a chat with him, and you know we were able to have that small again discussion. All right, thank you so much, uh, Sipamandla. You're, you're a brave man. I, I, I don't know how I would have approached this whole situation of being surrounded by some of the country's most hardened criminals. And, of course, do look out for Sipamandla Koke's full report, a comprehensive report here on ENCA, uh, where 